So in this video, we are determining the eccentricity of a hyperbola. So the eccentricity of a hyperbola. So basically, we know the definition of a hyperbola, uh, what our standard form is, um, the x squared over a squared, y squared over b squared, uh, if it's got a transverse axis of x, and uh, switching the x and the y's to find uh, if it's got a transverse axis of y. The eccentricity, just like with the ellipse is still going to be given by c over a. The only difference here is that c is now defined using c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Now, the, the eccentricity of a hyperbola will always be a number greater than 1. Remember, for an ellipse, it was always less than 1, right? It was between 0 and 1. Here, because c is always going to be bigger than a, this value e has to be bigger than 1, okay? Now, as the eccentricity increases, the branches become wider and wider. Okay, so notice here, if A gets, uh, I'm sorry, if C gets bigger and bigger difference from A, right, A goes into it many, many times. So if A is small but C is big, then we're going to get a much narrower, um, a narrower branch. However, if the A and the B are close together, you'll see that it'll start to widen out and start to get fatter and fatter, okay? Now, say we're given this problem. This is just like it was with an ellipse. We're given, uh, the we want to give the equation of hyperbola given its vertices and its eccentricity. So I know if my vertices are at negative 4, 1 and negative 4, 13, what's changing? The y value is changing. That means it's going to have a transverse axis that is vertical, right? So we're talking about... One, two, three, negative four, one, and negative four, 13. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, way up here. Okay. Now, that means that this whole distance, the center's in the middle. We have to go up to A and down negative A, right? But if that's the case, then that means that this whole thing can be just 2a. So 2a is the distance between these two points. So the distance between 1 and 13, right? We always subtract smallest from the biggest, and we'll know how big that distance is. So we get that 2a equals 13 minus 1, which is 12. Therefore, a is equal to 6. Now we're given the eccentricity is equal to c over a. Well, I'm given a. I'm given the eccentricity. Now, if a is equal to 6, so we've got c over 6 equals 5 over 3. So we can cross multiply. We get 3c equals 30, or c equals 10. So we know c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So this gives us 100. 10 squared equals 6 squared plus b squared. So 100 equals 36 plus b squared. We're going to subtract 36. We get 64 equals b squared or b equals 8. Now, we need to know we've got our a, we've got our b. What we don't have is our center, our hk. Or do we? Well, we know that halfway between 13 and 1 is what? 6? Is that what we said? That, you know, that value is 6 on each side? So I know that if I start at 1 and go up 6, I get to 7. If I start at 13 and go down 6, I get to 7. So I know that my center is going to be at negative 4, 7. Now, if you can't just figure that out, we know we find the difference or the average, uh, not the, the distance between two places can always be found by adding them together and dividing by two. You're basically finding the average. So 13 plus 1 is 14. 14 divided by 2 is 7. This is the midpoint, right? Remember the midpoint formula? Uh, you add your values together and divide by 2. So that's one way of doing it. So now we know that we're going to have our transverse axis is our y-axis, so it's going to be y 
minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. So y minus k, this is h and k, so 7 over a squared. Well, we know that a was equal to 6, so 6 squared is 36, minus x minus h, but h is negative 4, so plus 4 squared over b squared, which is 64, equals 1. So if you have any questions about uh, eccentricity of a hyperbola, shoot me a reminder or ask a question in class.